Did you think it was possible to find red raspberries in spring? Well, it's possible when you're talking about this red raspberry right here. And this is actually the red raspberry slime mold, Tubifera ferruginosa. And first I want you to notice how beautiful this looks, how brightly colored it is. You just don't see things like this in nature all too often. And I recently posted a video about chicken of the woods and I said, you know, I spotted that from about 30, 40 yards away because of how brightly colored it was and I actually thought that it was trash at first because you don't see things so orange in nature all the time. And I have to admit that I thought this was trash or confetti or something on the log from far away until I approached it and I got much closer and I found out, oh wow, this is the red raspberry slime mold, Tubifera ferruginosa. So at first glance, this might resemble a fungus or a mushroom. And for a long time, slime molds were classified in the fungal kingdom. And if you hang out with the Western Pennsylvania Mushroom Club or you go on a lot of mushroom walks with your local mushroom club, maybe a lot of people will obsess over slime molds and start collecting them because they're very, very interesting. But they're not true fungi. So slime molds are their own distinct organisms. And within that slime mold classification, there are three distinct groupings. And this one, the red raspberry slime mold, belongs to the Myxomycete classification. Now, what's interesting is that unlike a mushroom or a fungus, this isn't really penetrating this wood right here. So if you have a mushroom or a fungus, typically you've got the hyphae or the mycelium, that root-like network that penetrates a substrate and it gets in there. Not so with this. This is actually residing on top of this. And it's eating bacteria, it's eating yeast, it's eating fungal spores and other interesting things. Now, like a fungus, it reproduces through spores. So this entire structure right here, one of these structures, is actually known as a pseudoethallium. A pseudoethallium. So what the heck is that? Well, a pseudoethallium is a structure composed of lots of sporangia. And if you look really, really closely, you will see that there are a lot of sporangia, these reproductive units, tightly compacted together. And each sporangia is probably less than, you know, half a millimeter wide, but this entire pseudoethallium is probably, you know, an inch or two long. Now, Tubifera ferruginosa represents a species complex. So there are probably at least seven species within that complex, but we can consider this in the field as Tubifera ferruginosa. So this will reproduce through spores and it will release probably over a billion spores. And this will eventually turn into a purplish mass or a brownish mass and then fall away. But it's very interesting, and it's very cool, and I really like finding all kinds of slime bowls. They're very fun to find. And so I encourage you to get out there wherever you live and appreciate how densely complex the natural world is and how beautiful it is as well. Far more beautiful and complex than we could ever understand. And when you get out there, don't just look for plants, don't just look for mushrooms, but add slime molds to your list and enjoy the process of learning everything that you possibly can about everything new that you discover.